Now, using the computer audio participants. No, person right now until you hire a staff person. Uh, and I'm an assistant to the mayor. And um, I use he, him pronouns. And, um, and I, I guess I can go ahead and, and call the roll and we can see who's here. Uh, I did want to mention that there, uh, there is no public comment on this meeting tonight because it's an organizational meeting for the commissioners. So of course, folks are welcome to, uh, to watch, but there won't be a, uh, an open public comment period. So, um, so why don't I go down the, uh, the roll and I'll just take roll and, and see who's here. Um, just call out if, if you're here, I guess. Uh, Lois Ahrens. Here. Okay. Elizabeth Barajas Roman. Is Elizabeth here? Sorry. Yeah, okay. here. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Booker Bush. Here. Yeah. Great. Uh, Daniel Kennedy. Here. Okay, great. Uh, Nick Fleischer. Right here. Great. Um, uh, Councillor uh, Jarrett is here, right? Here. Uh, Carmen Lopez. Here. Great. Uh, Javier Luengo Garrido. Here. Great. Uh, Dana Olivo. No, Dana? Okay. Uh, Namdi Pol. I don't see Namdi. Okay. And Councillor Quinlan is here. here. Yeah. Um, Josie Rosales. No, Josie either. Okay. Uh, uh, Cynthia Sopis. Here. Okay. And Larissa Rivera Gonzalez. I know Larissa either. Okay. Great. All right. Excellent. Um, so, uh, so I have to make an announcement that this is this meeting is being recorded um, because it is a public meeting and will go up uh, in the uh, city's records and also um, on the uh, Northampton Open Media as well. So, um, and uh, the second thing on the agenda is introductions. And I think since, uh, since you guys are a new commission, since you folks are a new commission, that you should uh, introduce yourselves to each other. Um, and I don't know how, how's the best way to do this on Zoom, really. I mean, what do you think? <laughs> Council President, do, um, is, there, is there a list that pops up that we could go I mean, down? Um so we have the list on the website for the policing review commission. So, okay. um, or like, oh, and Dr. Pohl uh, is here. I see now. Yeah, Pohl popped in. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, you know, if people want to go in alphabetical yeah. order. I would, go by, I would go by the roll call order that you just yeah. called. I would just start at the top of the roll again. Okay, great. So uh, Lois, I guess you would be first then. Yes, this is the advantage having a name starting with A. There you go. <laughs> um, I, I don't know how much you want, you know, we, we should say. Uh, I can say that um, uh, I've lived in Northampton for 40 years, um, all of them in Ward 1. Uh, I grew up in New York, in Brooklyn, in East Flatbush, working class neighborhood. Um, I lived in Texas for 10 years. Uh, I've been an organizer for social justice for more than 50 years, starting with gay liberation in the 60s. Um, 20 years ago, I started the Real Cost of Prisons Project. And um, I guess I should say something about, I mean, my relationship to police and policing. Um, a lot of my work in the Real Cost of Prisons has been uh, about sort of the continuum of policing and uh, prosecution 
and incarceration. And um, who is the subject or the object of policing, which are as probably everybody here knows, uh, mostly people who are black people and brown people and poor people. And so that's been the focus of my work the last 20 years. Um, I guess that's enough. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and Elizabeth would be next. Hello, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Elizabeth barajas Um <clears throat> I um, have lived in Northampton for about uh, ten, going on 12 years, and I currently am the president and CEO of the Women's Funding Network, which is a global alliance of uh, women's funds and funders and gender equity funders um, that is based out of San Francisco, but I work in Northampton, especially now with the COVID, so I'm here all the time. Uh, so uh, I also have a long history with social justice organizations. I also, uh, prior to moving to Northampton, worked out of DC in the federal policy uh, level, working with the um, uh, immigrant women's uh, reproductive health and rights, and uh, worked closely with the Obama administration um, as well. Uh, and I am uh, just um, uh, interested and eager to serve with this committee to uh, help Northampton uh, move forward um, from this, this place we are now. So thank you for for having me and I, and I look forward to serving with everyone. Great, thank you. Um, Dr. Bush. Um, my name is Booker Bush. Um, I've lived in Florence uh, since 2009. Um, moved here from Boston, grew up in Berkeley, spent a number of years in New Haven. Um, I'm a member of this commission because I'm the delegate from the Human Rights Commission from Northampton. Uh, we voted and um, uh, I'm pleased to represent them um, on this commission. I'm a physician at Bay State Medical Center uh, doing primary care, general medicine. Um, we have a connection to uh, the prison systems and um, are, I'm frequently involved with um, assisting in the care of people who've recently been released from prison or have been released for an extended period of time. Great. Um, Daniel Kennedy. Everybody, um, my name is Dan Kennedy. I am a resident of Northampton. I've been here going on two years, um, but growing up in Western Mass, and being queer meant that I was frequently in Northampton <laughs> um, because it was one of the safer spaces. Um, I, I guess a quick bio for myself. Um, I went to um, American International College for my undergraduate, did graduate work at UMass Amherst um, in sociology. I taught social deviance, um, uh, deviance, social order, control, all of those things. Um, academically, I'm very familiar with um, the process of criminalizing bodies um, and who gets criminalized, um, but also being a person of color, I have the lived experience <laughs> of that as well. Um, so I'm coming with both of those, um, both of those experiences to this. Um, my own um, activist um, history has gone from um, local um, jobs with justice, uh, student labor action projects, um, and a number of other organizations around um, economic um, justice and racial uh, justice and equality. So I'm looking forward to working with everybody. Great. Um, Nick, I think you're next. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, uh, thanks for uh, those, those bios are very interesting, very helpful. Um, I'm Nick Fleischer. I've lived in Northampton uh, around 40 years since I went to uh, Smith College School for Social Work, and I've been a social worker um, for that time. Um, the last uh, 15 years, I've been um, more of an administrator overseeing crisis services and psychiatric crisis uh, intervention in the community and in, in 
uh, in local hospitals for mainly in Hampshire and Franklin County. Um, I, uh, uh, I started, um, I started the Northampton, uh, crisis services, uh, the current Northampton crisis services in 2010, um, when clinical and support options got the contract for, um, um, for that program. And, uh, and I've worked closely with, um, uh, with the hospitals, with the police, and the community, and have a particular interest in um, serving uh, people with mental illness, and um, and I am aware, I'm acutely aware of the police role, um, uh, both both positive and negative experiences, but more recently, more positive experiences in helping. Um, uh, uh, us work with people with serious mental illness. Um, I'm sure there's more, but that's enough for now. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Uh, David Hoos. Um, thank you. Um, yes, I'm David Hoos. Um, I uh, am a lawyer. Um, I grew up in upstate New York, um, went to Syracuse University Law School. I graduated in 1979 and moved to Western Massachusetts at that time. So I've been in Western Massachusetts for 41 years. I've been in Springfield um, for 28 years. Uh, I have, for the past 40 years, been a practicing lawyer. The vast majority of my practice has been criminal defense and civil rights litigation. Um, I started out as a public defender um, and have been in private practice for the past uh, 36 years, um, having dealt so intimately with police community interactions for as long as I have. I've developed some very strong feelings and I hope insights into the nature of police community interactions. I've long been interested in the issue of policing. I can recall going to meetings to establish a civilian review board in Springfield as far back as the early 1980s. So I'm very honored to be selected to be a part of this commission. Great, thank you. Uh, Councilor Jarrett. Thanks. Um, so I'm Alex Jarrett. I'm the city councilor for Ward 5. Uh, I've lived in Northampton for 22 years. Um, I also, my other job is a worker owner with the Pedal People Cooperative. And my interest in serving um, was sparked by listening to the hours of testimony in our council hearings in June. I feel like I learned so much in that time about what alternative approaches to public safety could look like. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to diving deep into those and listening to all the stakeholders. And I also think, you know, that the, since the council will be the body to enact legislation, and approve future budgets, I'll be looking at our recommendations and uh, from that lens. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Carmen Lopez. Hi, I'm Carmen Lopez. I um, have been living in Northampton for about two and a half to three years. Um, originally from Springfield, lived there, uh, was born there. Um, my background is, uh, well, I do, I, I wanna make sure that I say this, I am very proud to be Puerto Rican. I'm very proud that's my heritage and my culture is very important to me. So I wanna make sure I put that out there. Um, but my background, I am a school adjustment counselor and my background is in mental health. I worked in mental health um, field for quite a few years dealing with um, trauma and crisis. So I have definitely been in the trenches, um, a little bit different working in the school system, but I do work in Springfield. Um, in the North End. So I also, I, I'm still definitely in the trenches as, as far as trauma and crisis, but um, yeah, thanks for choosing me. Great, great. Uh, Javier? Hi, uh, Javier Luengo Garrido. I'm originally from Chile, an, an immigrant, first generation immigrant. Um, I work for the ACLU in Massachusetts. I'm a staff member. Um, my, I work a lot in immigration, also police accountability and police reform with the ACLU. Great. Um, and did Dana, is Dana here? 
Yes, I'm here. Oh, Hi. great. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I was late. I oh, no links. Um, my name is Dana Olivo. I um, have lived in Northampton for, for a little over five years. Um, I am originally from Maryland, the DC area. And when this opportunity came, came up, I was really excited to get more involved in my local Northampton community, um, particularly around these issues around policing. And when I, I have a partner who is Latino and presents as Afro-Latino um, and three children. And so being folks of color, being black in this community is not always easy. And um, and I think that this is areas around policing and um, equity and inclusion and whether it's in the schools or on the sidewalk are very near and dear to me. So Great. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Pohl. Yeah. Hello. My name is Namdi Pohl. Um, I'm a, a professor of psychology um, at Smith College, also adjunct in the School for Social Work. Um, also feel like I want to apologize for being a bit late. I was I also followed the wrong link here. And so, oh, yeah. yes. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, delighted to be here. Um, what else can I say? Um, I, I, I'm a licensed clinical psychologist in the state of um, Massachusetts. And so, you know, um, so I've got some mental health expertise I'm bringing. But it turns out that my area of research focus probably since the 1990s has been um, police trauma. That's one of the areas that I've done research. Um, I also teach on race and ethnicity, including right now I'm doing a class called Psychology of the Black Experience. So I bring a you know, certain expertise, but also real strong interest in you know, racial and race and racism. Um, what else can I say about this? Um, yeah, I, I, and, and, and it's um, definitely an honor to be part of this group, to learn from you and to contribute to this dialogue. Hopefully we can be a, a model for what other um, towns like ours um, might do with this similar challenge. So thank you. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, Councilor Quinlan? Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Michael Quinlan. I'm the city councilor in Ward 1. Um, and I am uh, just just so thrilled and touched to be a part of this uh, commission uh, in, in our hearings in, in June, as, as uh, Councilor Jarrett mentioned before, we were met with amazing public comment and there was so much to learn. Uh, and I feel like that was a really interesting kind of starting point uh, and here we are now as a commission, and I'm, I'm thrilled to see all of your faces and, and be on this night one of this because uh, this was something that I was, was really all about, was, was creating something like this. And so uh, to, to actually echo what Dr. Poe was saying, I, I look forward to learning from all of you. I look forward to uh, also you know, contributing what I can contribute here uh, and, and really um, pushing Northampton forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor. Um, Josie Rosales. Hello, um, I'm Josie. Uh, I'm from the I'm a little on the younger side. Uh, I'm a recent uh, school history. Uh, I did core. Josie, your um, your sound is hard to hear. Yeah. Josie, if you turn off your screen, it might work better. Um, I found myself kind of this crossroads of what uh, I'll try uh, to it's still not working. Is that, is that better? Yeah, it's better. Uh, maybe. Let's try again. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's still very distorted, I think. But. He's going to call in on a phone. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna join audio. Yeah, so Josie's going to try to join audio on the phone, I guess. So, do you want to go to Cynthia in the meantime, and then? Yeah, yeah. Why don't we do that, um, Cynthia? Do you want to yeah, hi, I'm uh, Cynthia Swopis. Um, great to be with all of you. What a what a great group. Um, I'm a Midwestern transplant, but lived in Northampton for 30 years, and uh, just moved into our third neighborhood. <laughs> um, <laughs> So a different house every 10 years, I guess. I don't know, but um, I'm a retired faculty member at UMass. Um, I taught communication. I taught health communication, social determinants of health, um, and I'm still teaching there online since we are all online. Um, so I teach at, um, at the University of Health Arts and do reflections on health choice. Um, my background is health, and I'm also on the board of health. And we recently determined that um, we need to look at all our policies and procedures to make sure everything that we do is taking into consideration um, the entire community. So I'm, I'm very, very delighted to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Cynthia. Josie, I think, I think right. Josie has, his phone, has the phone ready. It looks like you have to. Un oh, okay. Let's see. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear okay. me now? Yeah. Perfect. Uh, fantastic. Um, hi, I'm Josie. Uh, I am, I was born in Guatemala. My family immigrated here when I was very young. Um, I use they, them pronouns. Uh, I am currently a high school history teacher in Pittsfield. I live in Northampton. I've lived in the area for about two years. I've lived in the Valley uh, for about six years now. Uh, I got my education at UMass Amherst, where I majored in history, with kind of a focus in um, police history and immigration history. And um, I'm a little bit on the young side. Um, I'm 24 years, 24, turning 25, but um, I definitely believe in civic engagement, and I definitely want, um, I'm definitely excited about the great work that I think this council is going to do, and I think we could set an example for other Massachusetts municipalities in terms of really reimagining what policing looked like and how we can better suit all of our citizens equitably. Great. Thank you. And um, finally, Larissa. Are you there, Larissa? I am. Sorry. Oh. No, no worries. Um, so I, I, I'm sorry, I'm a little late to the meeting, but um, my name is Larissa. I am from originally from New York City um, and have a very background. And um, I'm excited to be part of the group here. Um, I have, like I said, a very, very background from New York City originally, and then also um, in Springfield for the past 20 years. So um, I have sort of, my father is, uh, was, a, a, or is, I should say, a, a retired cop um, in New York City. And so I have some experience with um, having someone very close to me uh, have uh, sort of a, 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 that kind of experience. And then also having, my husband is, I, uh, I would say black uh, American um, and having his experience in life and in, in, in um, sort of having that experience with uh, the police. So I am excited to be part of the group. I'm excited to be um, bringing a, a, a varied background into it. And, and so, um, I'm sorry that I've been a little late into starting, but um, I am excited to um, bring something different to the group and also um, 
uh, hear what everyone else has to bring. So thank you. Great, thank you. Um, so the next thing on the agenda is the election of co-chairs. So I'm not sure how you folks want to proceed with that. If there are people that are interested in being co-chairs of the group or any thoughts on how we should go forward? I was actually wondering if there was a description of what the co-chair responsibilities are or what the um, expectations that's a good question. Um, and I would defer to council president or the mayor about that. I, I have a thought that I want to put out there. Okay. And, uh, I, uh, I, I shared this, uh, in an email with the mayor and the council president. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the task that we face is um, is a challenging one uh, with a lot of um, uh, uh, a, a lot of potential paths, a few rabbit holes uh, some some it's very complex and the chair is going to have to, I think it is a good question Elizabeth asked, what, what should the chair, what's the responsibility of the chair? Mm -hmm. um, because we don't really have a pathway that I know of, and maybe others have another thought. But I would like to suggest early on uh, the idea of using a facilitator a professional facilitator to help us um, to help guide us to the right questions um, the right a, a way that everybody can have um, input and 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 not be constrained by necessarily by other people's viewpoints but a, an opportunity to get everybody's ideas out there and then to kind of narrow it down to a conclusion with some recommendations to the city um, for how to think about the budget next year and perhaps even beyond next year. But I, I, I and I, I also have some possible suggestions, but I want to put this idea out there. It would cost money. I mean, we'd have, it would, Professional facilitation means hiring somebody. And, um, but my concern is that we could wander and meander, um, and maybe I'm jumping the gun. I, you know, I, I, I just, I want to put the idea out there because the earlier we think about something like this, the more likely it is to, to work. Let me let me stop there because and 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 maybe get back to you, what you just said, Elizabeth, about um, uh, what you, what does the chairperson what's their responsibility? Because I'm not seeing unless somebody I don't see a job description, and I'm not sure. Uh, I, I mean, it, it's going to be whatever we decide, as far as I can see. Mm -hmm. Great. Lois, Other thoughts? Yeah. I'll mute myself. I saw, I saw Lois's hand. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't want to like jump ahead of Elizabeth here, but uh, so are you suggesting, Nick, that this facilitator would take the place of co-chairs? And are we talking about co-chairs, that is co-equal human beings being chairs? Was that, is that what, is that what that well, means? In, in my experience in, in uh, work task forces like this, you can have the facilitator gives you the path and the chairperson uh, manages the meetings. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the uh, facilitator um, 
suggests uh, very specific um, uh, uh, tasks. Like the first question is, what is the problem we want to solve? What, 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 and what, what are the outcomes we're, we're looking for? And then what's a way to start talking about it so that everybody can get their ideas and thoughts out there without restriction? Because brainstorming and free free flow of ideas uh, if people jump to solutions too quickly mm -hmm. then we will really short circuit the incredible brain power that's on this committee and i see javier wants to say something yeah uh i <laughs> I appreciate what I appreciate what can you hear me well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I appreciate what uh, Nick is bringing uh, turning, but I must disagree. Um, I think that um, in a personal note, I, I think after the introduction, I can see and I can get excited about a personal color chairing and co-chairing this committee. I think there is a uh, incredible amount of talent and knowledge is in this group before jumping ahead and thinking that we need somebody to come over to direct the traffic um which by the way if that's the route the route that we ended up deciding i would push for to being somebody of color and, and I, I kind of second that in a in a way and i'm sorry i i don't know how we are doing sort of jumping in or not. But um, I agree with what you're saying. Um, I think it's, it's we, we can get stuck, right? Like this is a committee where we have our tasks to do a lot in a very short amount of time, right? We're, 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 we've been given a very big task. And I think that if we, if we get stuck on the sort of the details of all of those things, we may not be able to do everything. And I think that uh, we, we need to go with what our gut sort of allows us to do. And so I think that I agree and we should, you know, allow people to um, come forward, allow that, that those people are the ones that are the right ones that are tasked to do the, the job at the moment. And I'm not saying that it's gonna be perfect, None of this is going to be perfect. It's going to be very difficult. We're, asked, we're being asked to do something in a very short amount of time that most people can't do in five, 10 years. I mean, we're, we're being very, we're, we're tasked with a big job. So I think we need to trust our instinct and trust the people who are coming to the, to the forefront. And so I, I, I want to second the motion of the fact that there are people who are going to come up to the for, for, forefront and they're going to be the ones that are going to be the ones that they're going to do, but that, that we're going to have to trust. And there's going to be a lot of that in this, in this, in, in the work that we're doing. And I don't know if there's a way to say that that's easier or that makes more sense, but I think that we are going to, we're going to have to trust each other in that. Um, because I think that they're, 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 this, we're, we're being tasked a big job right now. Mm -hmm. I think the mayor had something he wanted to say too. I was just going to say that mo all of our multiple member bodies, just to answer Elizabeth's original question, um, all of our multiple member bodies, which you know, from the planning commission to the tree commission to whatever, um, it's our sort of our format that we elect a chair, usually a chair and a vice chair, but sometimes it's co-chairs. And basically the role of the chair or co-chair is to set the agenda, to run the meetings, um, you know, to, uh, in the case of chairs and vice chairs, if the chair's not there, the vice chair serves in their absence. Um, it's really um, uh, ministerial and administrative and just sort of doing the work between the meetings to make sure things get on the agenda. But obviously you would, you'd be working with a staff person. So you wouldn't actually, you know, someone would help be helping with the actual administrative work. Um, so really it's, it's, that's really the role of, of a chair or co-chairs um, on a multiple member body in Northampton. Yeah, Dr. Yeah, echo with our uh, follow up with and tie together what a lot of people are saying. I certainly uh, hear Nick's point about the wish to have some kind of uh, facilitation or coordination. And it sounds like the co chair 
which serve that role. We're being asked to elect co-chairs. And it strikes me that you know, I don't know what process we normally would use to arrive at that decision, but it would be helpful to hear in this body who sort of already has experience doing the kinds of things that the mayor just laid out. So if in your other roles in your life, you know, you've had the experience of running meetings, facilitating, um, that would be that would be helpful in terms of electing or and of course in in stating that experience, you know, also interest in in co-chairing. Uh, you know, also hearing not wanting to minimize, I know that I heard that Javier made the point of wishing for um, someone of color as a co-chair, um, which I think that's, that, that's yet another criteria. So I guess I want to put on the table that we have the general description of a co-chair, which is the ability to facilitate, organize, set the agenda, and it'll be lovely to hear who has that kind of experience in addition to who has the will and interest in, in doing that. Yeah, Cynthia, I think. Uh. Um, I, I just um, want to go on a limb and say that, um, sorry about patting on the back. I have a lot of experience in this, but you know what? Um, that experience has been influenced, right? Influenced by <laughs> my privilege. So I'm, I'm a strong proponent of uh, our chair and co-chair being people of color. And um, I just want to say that. Yeah, Attorney Hoos, did you? Let me preface this by saying I am not campaigning for this uh, job, um, but um, for the last 10 and a half years, I have been the president and chairperson of the Hamden County Lawyers for Justice. Um, which provides uh, indigent def lawyers for indigents in the Greater Springfield um, community. Um, prior to that, in the 1990s, I was the chairperson for the state um, uh, Massachusetts Citizens Against the Death Penalty for, I think, four years. So that's my background and experience. Again, I'm not really campaigning for this. Uh, for this, I tend to agree with what Cynthia said uh, and what uh, Dr. Pohl said. Uh, uh, certainly, a minimum of one uh, it should be a person of color, and uh, perhaps two. Um, so, I'm sure that uh, others of you have run meetings before. So don't be afraid to speak up here. It's trying to get the ball rolling. I, I would just also second or third or however we're doing this, um, that there is someone, and, and, and again, it doesn't need to be someone of color, but I think that there needs to be someone who is experienced in that realm. Um, and that, you know, I myself, I, 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 I wouldn't step into that role because I feel like sometimes we're tasked to fill that role um, because we are the person of color or we are that person who comes with that background. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's sort of, we either have to fill it or we don't, but that we do need to agree what is that, what is that requirement, right? And so um, I want someone who is going to represent what my family and what I look like and what I feel is going to be in that in that particular role. And so I don't want to, and, and, and I will also preface this by saying we can get stuck. We can get stuck in a position where we um, spend a lot of time figuring out what that is. And I also think that can be a negative, right? We can't be too long in the decisions. We can't be too long in what that is because then we don't end up moving forward, right? And then we are, again, we are tasked with a lot to do in a very short amount of time. So I think we need to figure whatever those pieces out. We need to be able to say that we are okay with making those decisions together as a group, but that also understand it's not going to be perfect. Every decision we make is not going to be 100% okay all the time. And that we, that we are okay with that. Um, and the reason why I say that is because we can get stuck. 
we can just get stuck in, 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 in whatever decisions we're trying to make right now. So, um, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not standing up and I'm not trying to take those positions because I have way too much to do in my own personal life. But I do understand that we do need to have people in the right places to help us move us forward. So. Can I interject super quick? There's been a request to kind of go over, um, you know, Zoom parameters or etiquette or how this is kind of this funny in between time where you don't have a you don't have a chair or co-chair. So um, there's been a request from someone on the commission to just uh, maybe figure out how you want to proceed at this moment in terms of raising hands, whether just you know visually or using the raise hand feature, which is um, if you click on open up the percent precipitate participants box it's down at the bottom of that screen you can raise your hand that way um, so you know once you have a chair the chair will kind of call on people but for now um, and court has been doing a great job of doing that but um, you know I don't know if there's a, a preference for how you want to kind of proceed at this moment or how you want to take turns or um, whether everyone's heard before someone gets another turn, something like that, but maybe just kind of some ground rules for the moment would be helpful. Preferences? Um, my fr I agree with what you just said. Um, um, I think we should try for now to um, have people who've already spoken not speak again until others have spoken. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm going to talk about, so I think another part of being a chair is the ability to listen to what's going on in the meeting. Um, I've not enjoyed being involved with meetings where the chair had a lot to say. Um, that makes it re that's why I think when Nick is talking about why you have a facilitator, because they're not quite so bought in. So I think whoever is going to be our chair um, or one of our chairs, I'm hoping that person would be also willing to listen. Um, um, I've chaired lots of committees. I've done lots of things. Um, though my wife told me she might kill me if I chose to be the chair of this commission. Court, I see that Dan has his hand up and so does Dana. Oh, okay. Great. Oh, great. Sounds good. So yeah, Dana, why don't, uh, why don't you go then? Hello. Um, I was, I guess, thinking about my experience as far as um, facilitating and I, I didn't mention this before, but I work at Smith College in residence life and I would say that I have a pretty extensive experience in facilitating dialogues workshops, trainings, um, facilitating meetings on a more than regular basis, more than I would like. Um, and I would be, I would be willing and I would just kind of throw my hat in there. I am not a big talker, booker, just so that you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I agree with you. Like, I think that it takes, it's a skill set um, and it does take someone who is willing to sit back and listen. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, Dan? Yeah, I just want to make sure um, that I'm understanding correctly. So um, the mayor just said that this was more of an administrative and facilitation role. I want to make sure that that's where this stands and that there's not anything else associated with it. If it's just facilitation, I'm happy to jump in. Um, and offer to help facilitate things, get things like project management and those sort of tasks. Um, but once it comes to things where there's real power associated with that, especially influence, that's where I want to step back and make sure that we're all on the same page um, before going forward. Um, just so I just really want to clarify, like this is facilitating, this is making sure that the meeting notes or the meeting agenda matches what we've already decided as a body um, in the previous meeting, that it's about calling on people, making sure the rules of order are followed for something. And it's not about deciding unilaterally about what makes it on or not or things like that. 
Is that correct? Um, just to follow up, if uh, yes, and you'll probably hear this from the city solicitor later on this evening. Um, the way multiple member bodies function is you make decisions as a group. Um, no individual has power. You have power as a body. And so, yeah, the chair generally, unless the body took a vote to say, you know, we authorize the chair to write a letter to somebody or, you know, authorizes you, um, the chair doesn't have any power other than what the will of the, of the, of the full commission grants them or decisions that the full commission makes. Great. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Councillor Quinlan, I know you were next there. Uh, thanks. I, I just wanted to to make sure that everybody understood uh, that Councillor Jarrett and I, as elected people, are not permitted to chair this uh, group. So neither of us would be throwing our hat in the ring uh, for that. I just want to make sure the group understood that about our roles here. Uh, other than that, we will be full members as will as with the rest of you. Uh, but but just in terms of chairing, uh, neither of us would be permitted. Uh, so I wanted to get that out there and. Uh, Look forward to seeing who else is interested. All right, and I see Carmen Lopez. So I tend to take leadership roles all, um, on often, and I really did not want, I don't want to take the leadership role. Um, Booker is kind of like the same situation. You end up having to, I feel like I end up having to talk to and direct and um, that's, I don't want to do that here, so I'm going to take myself off um, only because I really want to be an active participant and I want to be kind of more involved in the conversation as, instead of having to kind of guide and lead the conversation. Okay. And Lois, I uh, see your hand there. So I'm unclear. Are we talking about back to co two co-chairs? And if we are, then we should... Oh, do we agree on that? I don't know. It says in the thing, elect co-chairs. So, uh -huh. I guess. Um, and then the other question I have is, whoever is the chair of a meeting, of one of these meetings, are they going to follow Robert's rules of order? I mean, are people comfortable with doing that, whoever the potential co-chairs will be? Hmm. Good questions. Well, I don't, I was just going to say it's very, very clear that there's not interest, a lot of interest in my suggestion, but I do feel it produced some um, interesting discussion. And I do think um, Larissa is right. There's, it's going to be a, a lot of, uh, a lot of challenges to get opportunities for everybody to be heard. But I, I turn it back to Lois's question of uh, uh, does the chair have some guideline for um, uh, how to conduct the meetings? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Councilor Quinlan. I mean, I guess I would direct that, ask that question of our council president and the mayor, is that following Robert's rules required as part of open meeting law? Should we uh, should we know in advance now that that is going to be followed? Is, is that a choice that this commission can make? I just don't really know that myself. I'm curious if, if either of you can answer that question. Multiple member bodies tend to, but I don't know if it's a requirement, Mayor. It's definitely not a requirement. Um, it's generally sort of a framework that a lot of bodies use, um, like, you know, the school committee and the city council have it as sort of a backup. And But it's not, it's not a requirement of open meeting law. Committees can make up, can decide whatever process it wants to use, can be informal, um, but obviously at the end of the day, the commission speaks as a, as a body, so it has to come up with some decision, agreed upon decision-making um, methodology, but the Robert's Rules is certainly not a requirement. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess that's where I sort of, and I'm sorry to jump in again, because I'm trying to figure this whole thing out. Um, how do we decide who is in sort of the management or in the control of that? And so I'm fine with whoever wants to step up to the plate. 
Like at this point, we just need to move forward. I think we need um, to decide as a group that we might not have it all together. We might not have um, the absolute perfect person or perfect group, and then that's okay, right? Because we we need we we have we are tasked to do something, and we we have a, a, an amount of time to do that in. But in the sense that if that's, if that's what we agree to, we need to then have someone step forward, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be simple. It's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be okay. And it's not always gonna be what we agree to. But I think that we do need to do something, right? Um, we don't have a lot of time. We, we are tasked to do a lot in a very short amount of time. And that's why I keep going back to what our timeline is, the things that we are tasked to do, um, because we don't have the experience and the amount of time to say, we're going to do this over the next three, four, five, six months. We know that we have a certain amount of things that we need to get done in a short amount of time. And just even experiencing together, um, building the relationships that we need to build, we don't have that kind of time to do that. In a, it, it, you know, and it's and it's not. I could say, um, it's not ideal the amount of time we have. We don't get to build the relationships we need to build. But in this experience i can say i trust all of you i trust that you are all here for the experience that i am here for i trust that all of you are here for the same reasons i am here for um and we may not always agree but we are here for the same reasons <clears throat> and so that in that in and of itself to me says we know that this is what we're here for and, and that we're going to do these xyz things if we if we don't have that kind of time and we don't have that kind of experience then let's make those decisions now those people who are willing to come forward those people who are willing to be the ones who are going to lead okay they may not be the perfect ones they may not be the ones we would have if we had 10 12 13 months to decide that but those are the people who are coming forward now that's what we, I think we need to decide as a group. Um, we really don't have that kind of time to say uh, we would have done X, Y, Z differently. We know now that these are the people who are willing to come forward to make the, the decisions and to make these things come forward. That's what I'm saying. And I think that we need to understand that. Um, sort of going forward, and 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 it's, I'm not saying it's a negative. I think you can. This, this is my thing. You can have ten people, and those ten people are the right ones to make those decisions. It doesn't mean that that you, you don't have twenty or thirty other people that might have made those decisions. But those are the people that showed up, right? So right now we have ten people that showed up. Those are the people who are willing to show up to make those decisions. So that's what we need to do, right? Um, can I just make a quick process note, just, and maybe you guys are headed in that direction anyway, but um, just generally what the process is, is that um, someone would nominate themselves or someone would nominate somebody else. So that might be a way to kind of get this going. So, you know, free to nom, also I'm gonna do the pitch I always give. Feel free to nominate yourself. That is totally legit and pretty amazing. So do it. Okay. Yeah, David. Oh, I'm not hearing you. Uh, I just want to clarify, uh, Cord. There are several people that are using the Zoom hand. Oh yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So I, you know, whatever you want to do it, but there are people that are actually raising their hands. Okay. <laughs> okay. I... I think Booker's hand has been up for a bit. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. I've heard, I'm, I was just going to call the question and say, does anybody else want to volunteer to be a, cha a chair along with Dana? I, if I was going to sort of second the Dan 
Kennedy if he feels comfortable with the uh, with the job description. Yeah, I I agree with that as well. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm fine with that. Um, if no one else has a burning desire, um, then definitely. Um, but I, I do want to clarify. Just I know um, Lois has her hand up, but yeah. uh, are we talking co-chairs or chair, vice chair? Not that that probably makes too much of a difference, but it would be good to clarify that. We use the term. We use the terminology co-chairs um, because I, we were uh, thinking this was a large group and that. Um, there might be a shared load workload, um, but I, I don't know that that's written in stone. If the if the commission felt more comfortable with a chair vice chair, I don't think that would be problematic. Whatever's um, whatever works best. Sometimes groups have co chairs and they take turns facilitating, or sometimes it's strictly a chair vice chair. Um, but technically, usually if it's a vice chair, they they would chair in the absence of the chair. So. That's sort of how the how it works with other city boards and commissions, including the city council and including the school committee. Okay, and Lois, I think you've had your hand up. Sorry. I, I'm going to suggest uh, Dana and Dan as the co-chairs. Okay, second. Javier, did you have something? Yeah, I, I was going to fifth that uh, nomination. Okay. And Councillor Jarrett? Um, I, I just wanted to make sure that everyone feels that they have gotten a chance um, yes. to, to express their interest uh, before we um, go, you know, move on. To, to, that, to that question, Alex, I, I wasn't sure if David was saying that he was interested or not. And, and um, uh, do you want to speak to that, David? Uh, I would decline uh, in favor of Dana and Dan. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like, uh, I mean, do we need to take a vote on that then, or you think so? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. I think so, a roll call vote. Okay, a roll call vote. Okay, for uh, for both both candidates as as co chairs for Dana and Dan, um, Lois. Yes. Okay, uh, Elizabeth. Yes. Okay, uh, Booker. Yes. Okay, Dan. Yes. Okay, Nick. Yes. Let's get this show on the road. Okay, David. Yes. Okay. Uh, Alex, Councilor Jarrett. Yes. Okay. Carmen. Yes. Okay. Javier. Yes. Dana. Yes. Okay. Uh, Dr. Paul. Yes. All right. Councilor Quinlan. Yes. All right. Josie? Yes. All right. Uh, Cynthia? Yes. All right. And Larissa? Yes. Great. All right. So the motion passes, and you have two new co chairs. Hooray. <laughs> Congratulations. So can I turn over chairing the meeting to you now? <laughs> no. No, okay, <laughs> fine, no problem. Um, so next on the agenda, we have a presentation from the city solicitor, Alan Seawald, attorney Alan Seawald, uh, on open meeting law, conflict of interest, and public records. Good evening, everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Alan Seawald. I'm the town, the city's attorney, the city solicitor. When I say city solicitor, it sounds illegal, but, um, but I am the city attorney and um, I'm 
here to help guide you through this process with any legal issues that may arise. Uh, but tonight, uh, I just want to very briefly, because I, you've got a lot on your agenda and I just want to make sure that you are uh, sensitized to a few requirements of operating uh, in the legal sphere, in the public sphere as you are on this commission. And, and a couple of the things I want to talk about are sort of open government issues. And I know we all support open government, but there are some traps for the unwary uh, when dealing in the public sphere. And I want to make sure you're sensitive to them and you know that I'm around and I'm here to help you if you uh, run into any issues with regard to these topics. So let me start with the open meeting law. This is like one of the most fundamental open government requirements is that all meetings happen in open session unless they are subject to very specific um, permissible executive session purposes, um, which may happen but would be infrequent with this commission. Um, you don't have to worry about posting notices and all the rest of that. Uh, our new chairs will have to figure out exactly how they're going to divide up the requirement of creating an agenda because an agenda needs to be uh, posted at least 48 hours in advance of the meeting. So the agenda will have to be produced and you know the co-chairs or wh whoever is tasked with creating an agenda will be responsible and will have the authority to decide what goes on the agenda and what doesn't go on the agenda. That is one of the prerogatives of the, of the chair of the board and I think the council president can describe that in even greater detail. Um, let me just give you a couple of traps for the unwary. Um, serial communications. This is one of the most common ways of violating the open meeting law. Um, anytime a communication makes its way among a quorum of this body, which is a majority of the total body, um, uh, that is an open meeting law violation, even if all of the uh, participants didn't speak at the same time. So email chains that make their way among, I believe you're 15 members. And so uh, the eighth, by the time that email gets to the eighth member, it's a violation of the open meeting law. So, uh, and that could be text, that could be um, oral spoken. Um, once ideas are tr transmitted down the line, it's a violation. So you should significantly limit your conversations about your public business uh, outside of meetings. The next thing I'm gonna caution you about is reply all. Um, do not reply all to this commission. Right? You should be communicating with your chair. You can be communicating with your staff person. The best way to communicate with the rest of the commission between meetings is to communicate with the staff person. Right? And let the staff person communicate with the membership so that there is no uh, communication among the members, but never reply all to the commission. That is a, um, an almost guaranteed violation of the open meeting law. Um, expressing an opinion, just understand that expressing your opinion to a majority of this commission is a violation even if no one responds. So do not send out a, an email to everyone expressing your opinion on a matter that will be before this commission because that's a violation of the open meeting law as soon as you hit send. Um, if there are measures that will be sponsored, uh, avoid eight sponsors on a measure because you cannot have eight sponsors on a measure without eight people having communicated among themselves. So if there is a group that wants to sponsor something or promote something, it cannot be a, a majority of the commission. Uh, I am happy to help you with any of these issues. Um, I should preface what I'm saying tonight by if, there, if what I'm saying brings up any issues for any of you, uh, I'm available to be uh, you know, by email, text, or phone to help you work through any of these issues. The next thing I wanna talk about um, is the public records law. Any document you make or receive as a member of this commission is presumed to be a public record. 
all of the emails you send out about this commission, texts, um, any document that is produced out of this commission is presumed to be a public record. Uh, there are exceptions, but you should presume that anything you write um, is going to be public at some point or it can be public. And I will tell you, there have been numerous public records requests around the whole defunding of the police and all uh, the whole um, movement that, uh, that you are, uh, you arose out of um, uh, has spawned a lot of public records requests. So you can feel confident that at some point your records will be requested. Uh, and that brings me to email. Okay? Your private email will be subject to being perhaps searched by the city for public records if requested. I highly recommend that if you don't want that to happen, that you create a separate email account for this commission, for your work on this commission. That way, all of your email is in one place and no one is, is you know, rummaging through your personal emails to find public emails. It doesn't happen often, but it can. And I just wanted to alert you to that possibility. Um, and uh, I say this to every committee member, if you don't want to see it above the fold of the Daily Hampshire Gazette, don't send it. Okay, just understand that it could end up above the fold at the Gazette. And if you don't want to see that, don't send it. Um, Public records are different than public information. No one can make you speak. You may voluntarily speak. No one can make you speak, but they can compel you to produce records. Those are the open, open government um, statutes that I want you to be aware of. The, the last thing I want to talk to you about is conflict of interest. And um, understand that as a public official, you are considered for the, for the conflict of interest law a public employee by virtue of your service on this commission. Even though you don't get paid, you're still classified as a public employee, a municipal employee. And as a municipal employee, while you're serving on this commission, you can only serve one master, and that is the city of Northampton. Your loyalty is to the city of Northampton. Anytime you feel like your loyalty may be divided between the city of Northampton and any other party, including yourself, you need to step back and think about whether you might have a conflict of interest. Um, anytime you feel your personal interest bleeding into your deliberations or de decision making as a counselor, you need to seek guidance before acting. And there are two places you can seek guidance, either from the state, State Ethics Commission, or you can receive it from me, okay? There are uh, pros and cons of, of both. Um, and um, I'm happy to talk to you about the pros and cons certainly you'll get a faster response from me than you will from the State Ethics Commission. You might think you might get a, a more authoritative decision from the State Ethics Commission, but it'll take longer. Um, I also encourage you to step back and think about whether to act before you act, because if it's after you act and you contact the State Ethics Commission, you will not get advice. You will hear from the Enforcement Division. And I don't know most of you, but I know that none of you want to hear from the enforcement division of the State Ethics Commission. They do not fool around. They are very serious. So you really need to be sensitive to, the, to any time your or your family's financial interest um, start appearing in your thoughts when you're working on this commission. Um, if you have a conflict of interest, you must step away. You must step down. You cannot sit and deliberate and just not vote. You must completely absent yourself and not participate in that particular matter. Again, if you have any questions about it, don't act. Call me, please. Some basic, some basic financial um, conflicts of interest. Let me just say that conflicts of interest fall into financial and non-financial financial conflicts and the appearance of conflicts. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Let me talk about financial conflicts. No pro, uh, quid pro quo is allowed. No matter how small the money somebody is paying you to, to do something on this commission, no matter how small the task that you are being 
paid on the side to do, it's illegal. Don't take any money in for the purpose of doing something in exchange for that money or anything of value. Even if it's a not a quid pro quo, you cannot accept anything of value as a public official. The limit is $50. So if all of us, well, in the formerly before COVID, I would describe a situation here. If the police unions all of a sudden want to take you out to dinner and take you to the Red Sox game, no, that's not permitted. Even if it's not a quid pro quo, you cannot take anything of value for doing your work on this committee. If the defund the police people want to take you to a, a seminar, no, you can't do that. It's a thing of value. Um, do not participate in, in any matter that has a potential or foreseeable financial impact on you or your immediate family members. By immediate family members, I mean your parents, your children, your siblings, your spouse, your spouse's parents, your spouse's children, and your spouse's siblings. If any of those people have any foreseeable financial interest in a matter, you need to step away. Um, do not participate in any matter that has a potential or foreseeable impact on your employer or any organization that you might be uh, negotiating for employment. Very important. Um, you have to be very careful about your private life. And as a public official, you now may not participate in matters in your private life in which the city has a direct and substantial interest. I'm not sure I could come up with a good example of that in this context, but it could come up if you are being asked to uh, mediate or uh, a matter in which the city has a direct and substantial interest, you would not be able to do that unless we can find an exception for you. Um, if you're a lawyer, or you represent other parties in some other capacity, you may not uh, act as an agent or an attorney for any other party in, uh, in a matter which the uh, city has a direct and substantial interest. And you may not hold contracts with the city unless there are exceptions. So anyone who's holding a contract with the city, please co contact me. There are exceptions for pre-existing contracts, but while you're serving on this committee, there are limitations on your ability to enter into contracts with the city. Now, that was a lot of information. Um, if there are any questions about the conflict of interest, it's very important that you contact me or the State Ethics Commission. Let me just say that if you have any doubt in your mind, if you're wondering whether you should do something, you probably shouldn't until you get advice. That's the, if there's one thing you take away from this, please, if you have, if you're wondering, please call me. And that's what I have. Good luck and thank you so much for, uh, for your willingness to participate in this. Uh, it's a very, very important to the city and it's, a, it's quite an impressive group. Um, thank you, Alan. Can we um, ask a couple questions? Uh, sorry, I see that Dan's hand has been up and yeah. there are a few hands. Um, and then uh, I have something if, um, if it doesn't get covered with the questions. Um, yeah, I, I have three questions, and I think two of them are pretty quick. The other one might not be. Um, so the, the ones that should be pretty quick, um, what is the process for sharing documents such as journal articles, research, um, examples, and things like that with the commission? Like with other people, I'm assuming that we'll have lots of examples, lots of information that needs to be shared. So what's the process to do that? The, the best way to do that is... Um, to send it to your staff person and let the staff person circulate it. Um, can the staff person create like a repository? Like, I think that absolutely. was- Absolutely, okay. absolutely, awesome. no problem. All right, cool. Um, the next one, um, if we're already, <laughs> I think we've already received emails about the commission. Obviously we got the different agendas and links to our personal email. Does creating a second email at this point matter? Would they both be subject to um, to searching if necessary or should we create uh, I, uh, the, the I would expect that there's comparatively few emails to your personal email account at this point so uh, it's not a problem to start uh, a 
a new email account and take it forward. Awesome. And then the last one, just because I heard you say that the co-chairs can elect to omit things from the agenda. Um, the, 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 chair, the chair generally sets the agenda. Somebody has to set the agenda. Okay. Um, and then are there, is there anything, um, I guess maybe this is a little broader a question, but what's the accountability for chairs um, in that regard? Are there any accountability structures already set up in the city or is that something we decide on as a commission? Um, you know, this is an, uh, a bit of an odd commission because it's, it's neither, you know, uh, fish nor fowl. Uh, it's not a, an executive branch commission. It's not a legislative branch committee. Um, so it's not subject to the mayor's, uh, I don't think it's subject to the mayor's executive orders. Um, so this, uh, I, the accountability, uh, it's a very, very good question. Uh, I, I suppose the, uh, the commission could seek to remove a chair who is not um, performing properly, but somebody has to make the decision of what goes on the agenda and somebody has to be in charge. There's, Okay, thank you. Generally speaking, Dan, I will say that, and, and uh, I'd ask the council president to, to jump in if I'm misstating this, um, if somebody is asking for a matter to be put on the agenda, unless there's a reason not to, it generally will go on agenda. Uh, one of the reasons that sometimes it doesn't go on an agenda is there's just too much on that agenda, it's gonna need to go on the next one. But um, I haven't experienced extensively uh, refusal by a chair to put something that is clearly relevant on an agenda. So I'm pleased to say I haven't had to deal with this in 35 years, but I suppose it could come up. Um, so that's, that's true. I mean, I, I've not experienced that either, but I will say that in the council rules, which is something that the council votes on and accepts as their rules when they start a term, we do have a process for if, if the council president um, does refuse to put something on the agenda, there's a process for the counselors to then um, take a vote and demand it be on the next agenda. So we do have an accountability um, mechanism, um, but again, I've not ever seen that happen if it's something that's relevant to the business of the council. Great. Uh, Dr. Pohl, I think you had your hand up. Or, sorry, quick question. I've already begun to get emails from people in the community about at least two or three people who know that I'm on the board. And I wonder if there's any legal advice about how to respond, to respond to anyone who singles us out individually, wanting to inform us of something, correspondence with the community as members of the board. Any general advice about that? That's totally up to you. You are free. You, you don't leave your First Amendment rights to communicate with other people in the city at, at, at the com commission door. You're free to speak with or not speak with anyone you would like to, other than a majority of this commission. Um, Councilor Jared, I think you had your hand up too. Um, Cynthia might have been before me. Oh, was she before you? I'm sorry. Cynthia, then, sorry about that. That doesn't matter, it's okay. Um, uh, Attorney Seawall, can you give us some guidelines on how we should proceed with public comment? That's completely up to the commission. There is no obligation in state law ever to have public comment. That's a completely local um, process and you can decide how to do it if you decide to do it at all. I mean, it's very typical in the city and this, was a, this seems to me to be a commission that would wanna hear from the public um, in public comment, uh, but that's totally up to the commission. I think uh, I would just recommend to the chairs that we might wanna put that on an agenda because um, as we know in city council, um, there were several hours of public comment. So we might want to talk about how to frame that um, for this as, commission. As long as you make rules about it uh, before the public comment begins, that's fine. What you don't want to do is start making rules about public comment in the middle of public comment because you realize that it's gotten away from you and it's, you've got you know, hundreds of people on the public comment list and you haven't made any rules around it. Right. Thank you. Councilor Jarrett. Yeah, I just wanted to share, um, sometimes I receive public emails in 
in my official capacity to my personal emails and I immediately just forward those uh, to my city account and so that that to keep that separation um, so if you have ones that you've already received and you start a new account you could just forward the ones you've already received and then that should should be you know that all of the public records are in one place Great. That's a good suggestion. Um, Solicitor Seawald, could you just go over what people can do? Um, so, for example, there was a question about scheduling. You know, what is permitted on, under open meeting law um, that doesn't violate a, you know, a quorum or? In the absence of a staff person like you have, typically what would happen is that, uh, that board members would be sending an article and saying, I want to discuss this at the meeting and that's all there is. So you are able to um, schedule, do administrative details um, outside of the meeting uh, and that's fine. And so your staff person might be circulating special meeting dates and you could respond to that whether you're available or not. What you can't do is, uh, is deliberate on any matter that will be substantive matter that will come before the uh, uh, the commission. So is that what you were referring to? Uh, Madam um, yes, and also um, site visits maybe are not going to be a possibility, um, but generally. Site visits are not public, are not meetings. They are not public meetings uh, because if it's a public meeting, the, the public would be uh, able to attend. And so for instance, in a different context, for instance, the planning board will hold a pub, will hold a, a site visit, um, and if it were a public meeting, everyone in the world would be able to go into somebody's house and look around. You know, it would be, uh, you know, invited into somebody's house or onto somebody's property to take the site visit. So they're not public meetings, site visits. So if you were going to take a site visit of the police station, for instance, that would not be a, a public meeting. But you would want to be careful about conversations while you're, while you're there. Right, and so typically what happens at a uh, site visit is that whoever's leading the site visit will point out things that uh, he or she or they would like you to observe, take note of, and then when you're in the public meeting, you'll discuss what you've seen. Great, are there any other questions for Attorney Sewell? I have a question about um, conversations between co-chairs. Like I'm, I'm, I'm assuming there has to be some conversation to set an agenda. So long as the conversations are between the two of you, it's not a quorum and it's not a problem. Okay. So it, it, it's a matter if, if you then go out and speak to three people, Dan goes out and speaks to five people, then you've got a problem. But as long as the conversation is between the two of you, it's not a quorum and it's not a problem. But, and you will have to speak, but you're gonna to have to divide the tasks. Who's gonna set the agenda? Who's gonna run the meeting? What are, you know, it's not ordinary to have co-chairs. It's more, more typical to have a, a chair and a vice chair. So it's clearly delineated that the chair or, you know, in the council, the president would serve those functions and only when, uh, when the, the president's not available would the vice uh, President, step in. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Lewis, I see your hand. Yep. Uh, so, what about if Dan and Dana uh, want to talk to two or three other people that are on the commission about something? It's not a quorum. They're still able to do that, and we're still able to take part. That's right. But as soon as those three other people start talking to other members, you've now serially violated the open meeting law. So it's very risky to, to operate that way. And Javier, I see your hand there. Yeah, I, so you're, you're talking about a sort of a domino effect, right? In the relationship to two it, people took it to two, two and two and all of a sudden blah, 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 right? It could be more than one line of dominoes. Yeah. It's not I'm, a but straight I'm, line of dominoes. You know. Circular, right. whatever you want to call it, but um, um, I may have more questions, but probably I'm going to call you. Feel free, please. Um, Sisters, you could you also just talk about the possibility of of 
like a subcommittee or multiple subcommittees if they wanted to divide work or look at certain things as subsets? So subcommittees are um, a group of more than one of the commission members who are assigned by the commission delegated uh, certain tasks. Generally, subcommittees don't decide anything. They study and they come and make recommendations or report to the, to the whole body. Uh, subcommittees are governmental bodies, just like the, the, parent or the parent body is. They're subject to the exact same open meeting law requirements, the same public records law requirements, um, and the same conflict of interest law. Um, so it's just a mini me of the of the commission, but it's all subject to all the same requirements. You cannot discuss among a quorum uh, anything that will come before the subcommittee. And so when you typically uh, most of our boards and committees are not this large. So a lot of times uh, subcommittees end up being three. And so no two can ever speak to each other outside of a meeting ever. Any other questions for Attorney Sewell? Huh? Thank you for your presentation. You're welcome and thank you all once again for your service. Great. So next on the agenda is a uh, discussion of hiring a commission staff person. Did you, uh, did you folks receive the draft uh, administrative assistant uh, position? Uh, that the city human rights uh, or the, the city human um, HR department drafted up today. Great. You can screen, you could screen share it, perhaps, Cord, if you wanted to for the. Yeah, yeah, that would be good, wouldn't it? Um, hang on a sec. Let me see. I think I have to download it to do it, right? To screen share it. I have it up if but I think you'd need to throw the hosting to me and then I could share it. Oh yeah, okay. You want me to do that? Let me see if I can do that. Sorry about that. Hey, Coast, there you go. So one thing, I, while you're pulling it up, one thing I noticed when I read the job description was it, it did not include doing meeting minutes. Um, are we supposed to elect a clerk to do that? Hi. It should include that. Um, yeah, I think it does include that. I have that. to reread it, but it definitely, would, that would be one of the tasks would be producing the minutes uh, for the commission. I don't know if it was spelled out clearly, but it should be. I'm not seeing it. Uh, yeah, it was there and then it went away, Counselor. Oh, you're not seeing, oh, weird. That's weird. Okay, hold on. Okay. Try again, it was. Yeah. Now? Now. Yeah. No, yes, okay. Could you make it a little bigger? Um, I can. How's that? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so here, I'll just do a, I'll let you read this part and then I'll do a slow scroll in a second. It does mention minutes. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, Councillor Quinlan had his hand up and Booker had his hand up and Lois had their, her hand up, so. Yeah, I had a question. Uh, and I, I, it's for the mayor uh, about this uh, position because I know that the city had uh, laid some people off. I didn't know if there was a person that would be in line for something like this, if, if the city's required through any sort of um, employment law to, to consider uh, anyone that was laid off for this position before uh, this commission goes down the road of, of accepting applications or something like that. Um, this is a non-represented position. It's a new position um, and it would be advertised uh, through our HR portal. Um, 
uh, and so anyone would be eligible to apply for it, but no, it would not be, um, if somebody were laid off or furloughed from their position, they would, this would not really be, um, they would not have any um, advanced standing for this particular role. So this is not a, this is not a position that um, previously existed or someone was laid off from or furloughed from. Okay, thank you. And Lois, did you uh, did you have something? Well, I have. I actually have a bunch of questions about it. I, maybe, I mean, like it doesn't say um, how many hours a week this person would work, or how much money is allocated for it, or uh, who hires this person. Um, and I mean, the Mayor just mentioned that you put it in the. HR portal or whatever you just said about that, but um, is there another way to that, um, you know, to get the word out about this? And there also, you know, isn't like anything in here. It says what the functions are, but not anything specific about what kinds of experience, uh, you know, we're asking for. And then when I read this, I thought, and maybe this, Maybe this doesn't belong in this part of the conversation, but not sure where it goes anyway. Um, like, is there uh, like there are other is there other than this staff person? Is there another budget for the commission? Because it seems to me like there probably would be other things that we might want to have to pay people to do other than this this person, and so. Uh, is there a budget and how much is that budget? And, you know, like I was thinking about other couple of other kinds of people we might need to pay uh, in addition to this. So I don't know if it's exactly, you know, it, it just raised this other question for me about the budget for the commission. I can try to answer that. Um, I'll, I'll try to answer those, all those questions. You may have to remind me about some of them. I think at the top, um, there is a salary band um, and it's, we are envisioning it's a temporary part-time position. Um, there's also some length, I think there, I think this may have gotten cut off. There's other um, sort of more, more boilerplate language with all of our job descriptions, but I believe it does ask um, for a certain number of, of years of experience, you know, in a related field, like one to three years of experience. I think, I think at this point, I think there's a high school, minimum of a high school diploma required. Um, um, so those kinds of things, but the, the, uh, the band E is, is a um, part of our city personnel um, system. Um, and it, so this is where typically an administrative assistant a person to like a either a committee or to a department where they would fit in that in that pay range. The city uh, council I brought an appropriation order. They approved it to allocate uh, twenty five thousand um, dollars, which would fund um, a staff person who's a temporary part time person. Um, we were thinking on the order of you know uh, fifteen to eighteen hours every two weeks, sort of or you know. Uh, seven to nine hours a week, um, roughly. Um, so that's where this comes from. The um, hiring supervisor, it says the HR director because HR would would help with the search, but um, my, my thought would be that HR would, would um, be the facilitator of the applications, et cetera, but that most likely the co-chairs um, would be involved in um, interviews and, and, um, and, or they could come up with a process to bring uh, you know, finalists to the full board, but uh, they would work with the committee to make the hire. Um, we have an HR portal, but we also advertise in local newspapers like the Daily Hampshire Gazette, um, and all of our HR um, uh, want ads go to, I believe, Indeed and LinkedIn, which are also very sort of popular. And we can also put it on the city Facebook page and use other uh, portals to advertise the job, but there's, um, but there would be sort of, uh, you know, sort of automatically it would go on those online uh, uh, job search portals. Um, in terms of other funds, that would be uh, 
I, certainly the commission could request additional funds of the city council and mayor. Um, and so part of what your, I think what part of what's on your agenda tonight is to discuss this position and or um, whatever other staff uh, or other requirements. But I think the, the process would be, you would probably bring a request to the mayor and city council for additional funding if, if the need arose. Good. Um, that's, that's good about the advertising, getting the word out. Um, so, and so the 25,000 that's allocated is just for this position. Um, and so if we're thinking about, I mean, if I'm thinking about other kinds of people that we might need, is this the time to mention them or is this or some other time? I don't, I don't, I mean, maybe it's jumping the gun or something. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, um. Nobody can answer. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you are going to talk later about your sort of work plan and what your work okay. methodology is going to be. So maybe that is part of that. I mean, we, we our, our first concern was getting a staff person on board who could then take over the role of working now with right. your co-chairs to put together the agendas and the minutes and posting them and, um, and basically being the administrative person that, you know, shares documents and creates all the other things that need to be created um, as part of um, keeping the commission running. So that was sort of the first piece of this. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the thing about this job description or what, not description or what functions are is it's pretty broad because it also includes conducting research and helping to prepare oral and written reports. So it's quite a varied job. I mean, in terms of uh, what somebody's skill set needs to be for this job. Uh, oh, well, I'll bring up the other the other ideas or other thoughts that I have uh, later on then. Okay. Uh, Councilor Jared, I see your hands up there. Oh, yeah. Um, I just wanted to check in about how um, the, that this position would not be part of a union and um, how is that Work, you know, personally, I'm someone who think, believes that if a person wants to be part of a union, um, they should be able to. But is this is that because of the um, temporary nature or the part time nature? Um, if you could speak to that. Well, um, the way our collective bargaining process works is that um, um, employees, uh, you know, um, typically. Uh, the respective union it's uh where someone um may be more more closely affiliated with would typically request that a position be deemed uh part of the bargaining unit um but generally for uh temporary and part-time uh positions that's generally not the case you know this is a position that's being created and will basically um go out of um existence when the commission goes out of existence in you know nine months or so and so typically that's not the type of position that would be part of a bargaining unit but it's not our it's not the it's not their decision and it's not my decision it's actually the bargaining unit itself um, in this case it would be ask me um, um, generally it there's um, uh, usually there's a six to one year um, probationary period before someone would even become a bargaining unit member um, I don't know the ask me contract off the top of my head, but so that's why um, we we would generally not uh, put a position like this. Uh, it, it would be a non-represented uh, position. Okay, thank you. Um, I could sense it's possible this this may be extended beyond the nine month period. I think it's just something we could uh, could think about for the future that it may make sense to be represented at some point. And then also I would note with the, the money that we're paying, if we pay 10 hours a week, $20 an hour um, for nine months, it's something like 7,800 plus, of course, overhead uh, that I'm sure HR has and all that. But it seems like there would, would be additional money um, for other positions if, or other tasks if we needed that. Yeah, we were estimating that at the highest end of the range and somebody, you know, that was working in a two week pay period, you know, you know, eight, up to 18 plus hours that it would be, you know, about $20,000. So you would definitely have more than enough with some additional funds left over um, to be able to access. Okay, thank you. 
And Dan, I see that your hand's up there too. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe this is something um, I'm not 100% sure. If we wanted or if we needed records from different city offices and things like that, would that be this person coordinating that? Would they be actually collecting those records for the group? Um, or the commissioner, would they be working with people in those departments? Um, um, it's uh, that would that would uh, certainly be very common for um, a staff person like this, uh, whether it's one of my staff members or this uh, administrative assistant to the city council. You know, if, if there is a certain piece of information that the commission wanted um, from a city department, um, generally, then, you know, the administrative person would between meetings make that request and try to gather that information for the chairs or the commission. So yeah, that would certainly fall within um, one of the related tasks of a um, of an administrative staffer in this type of a role. All right, great. Are there any other questions about this? Uh, I think I have one more question. Um, just. Um, so I know that I saw that it was uh, this person ultimately is going to report to the HR director. Is that correct? Who that like? Um, they would actually report to the commission, and I think the the the, the HR would be sort of. It's, I think it says the hiring authority. Um, I think they were going to be running the the search, but ultimately this would be a staffer to your commission. Um, so they would be um, working. Uh, with and for you, um, but obviously you're a group of community volunteers, and so HR generally, you know, similar to when um, other groups or small departments do a search, uh, typically HR is helping as and serving as the as the hiring authority, primarily to make sure that we don't run afoul of employment laws and that the search is conducted, you know, fairly and equitably, and and um, that's generally why they're involved. Okay. Um, are they also involved in sort of that person, like think about who the person or who the group that this person reports to, I just want to make sure that there's somewhere codified in their protections for that person. I can see them being quickly overwhelmed um, and having way more <laughs> um, than what the job description um, actually is from 15 different people saying, hey, I really want to know this or please send out this. Um, and all of those things. And I want to make sure that there's protections or somewhere where they can go and someone that can say no more, stop putting things on this person or advocate for them as well. I think you would be one of the protectors, Dan, as the co-chair. Um, generally, and again, I, I mentioned this earlier in the meeting, generally multiple member bodies um, make decisions as a group. And so um, I don't think that... Um, and generally you would not have 15 different people giving a list of tasks to um, someone to carry out because really the group, this person's working for the commission as a body. So I think, um, I think you'd have to, to agree upon research and agree upon um, tasks and agree upon, you know, from meeting to meeting, the things that need to be done between meetings um, and then delegate that to, um, to your staff person. Um, and that's, you know, similar to the city council, it's similar to school committee, um, because as you say, it would become overwhelming if you had 15 different bosses. Really, the boss is the commission acting as a group and making decisions as a group. Um, so that's really, um, you know, the co-chairs would probably be sort of the, the direct liaison to the staff person to make sure that the work that's, that the commission is asked to be carried out is being carried out. All right, and Lois, I see your your hands up there again. Yeah, I just wondered, um, do we do we want to set a time frame for when this is going to happen? You know, like when when we'd like to see this person hired, other than like tomorrow. But I mean, realistic time frame. Generally, um, you know, we if you give a thumbs up, we would we um, would. We post city jobs uh, on a weekly basis, and we generally post jobs a minimum of two weeks, um, but it can obviously be longer. And um, 
And what could happen next would be we would um, connect our HR folks with the co-chairs of the committee um, and they could be in communication about, you know, applications as they come in and provide that information to you. It's actually all done electronically and can be, you know, it's, it's through an HR portal. So, you know, th there's not a lot of paper. Um, and so that there would be a way for them to um, establish whatever time frame the commission wanted. Um, but certainly with a minimum of two weeks, we could begin to see applications coming in and the co-chairs could begin reviewing those with HR, et cetera. So it could, that, that's a minimum timeline, but certainly the commission could um, opt for a longer timeline. Can I, can I say something? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I just, just, I, I, I agree with Dan's concern about the person's, um, how, how the job might develop. I just wonder if you have a standard for reporting, uh, line, line, lines of reporting in your job descriptions, because I think it would be good to clarify the, maybe a, a dotted line to HR, um, a, a direct line to the chairs of the of the committee, but just to kind of clarify in the job description, who who does the person go to for what? Um, Do you have a standard uh, thing that the state the city does for a, a reporting line? Um, we generally um, we're generally dealing with departments, so generally administrative staff is sort of reporting to the department head. Um, we have very few of these types of staff, really. Just uh, literally, there's the school committee, the city council, and 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 this body. So we can certainly clarify that. Um, uh, I note there's a line in here: conducts research when requested by members of the NPRC. Uh, that's somewhat open-ended, and so maybe you know, um, whatever, with the approval of the co-chairs or something like that. I mean, there's there's certainly a way you could put that in there. It does say prepares agendas in coordination with the NPRC co-chairs. So it does, yeah. I, I, I just, you know, if, if we're trying to, if we're reviewing this to see if it's a, a good job description, I would just ba basically say the person reports not to the, the whole committee, but to the chairs, because it, it just simplifies it. And then, um, uh, and that, that there's an administrative reporting to HR for um, any, uh, 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 city administrative, you know, um, payroll functions, things like that. Okay, I can I can ask HR to really try to clarify either here or above that that the person would be um, ultimately reporting to the co-chairs of the commission. That's easy to do. Right. Thank you. And uh, Javier, I see your your hands up. Yeah, I I just. Uh... I just want to flag something. Um, having in mind that the commission base is, is, you know, social and racial justice, asking a person in a low paid job to have to work part time for nine months. Um, I mean, in, I want to flag that for a second. I mean, in, in, a, in a country that we're talking about uh, the unemployment is low when what we want to say is like chitty jobs exists a lot in part-time chitty jobs even more. Uh, I just want to flag the fact that, um, I don't know, I, I feel that uh, I agree with the discussion about who is going to report the person, but I think it's it's a little, I would prefer to also to, to, to put our attention in the working conditions, in the pay, because we want somebody who first school is going to stock for the nine months and being nine months part time. I mean, uh, hopefully we're going to get somebody with, with, with a pretty diverse background and we want to be able to, to, to reach out to that kind of pe person. And, and, you know, I, I just want to put it there. I don't have a solution. I see the problem though. And, I don't know. I, I would I would like to talk a little about that and sort of get the opinion of different people here. Mm -hmm. And Dan, I see your hands up there. Yeah, I shot my hand back up. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you for really being actionable and responsive to our questions about like who the the um, staff person should report to. Um, and I don't mind the 
the idea of them reporting to just the co-chairs um, for this position, but I think before we go and make that change, it is something that we should run by everyone because it does actually change you know, the position of the co-chair <laughs> um, to, to directly oversee this person and to also set a precedent for what sort of process we want going forward when we're making changes or to achieve or check for consensus too. Um, I don't know if that, maybe this is too early, maybe this is something silly, but I think it's important to know that everyone does have a voice and that this isn't just a sort of unilateral um, sort of thing. Is that, does that concern anybody else? I'm, maybe I'm just <laughs> um, a little bit paranoid, but I wanna make sure that, that these processes are established so that it's not just, hey, let's make a change and then that change happens before, before we have input from everyone. Dan, can I respond? Yeah. I, I just want to clarify. It, you would funnel any I'm gonna, issue. I'm sorry. I'm going to speak over Nick because Nick talks a lot. And I'm going to ask that he try to sit back a little bit and listen more. Um, I've had my hand up for a while. Um, so I'm just going to put that there. Okay. My apologies. Booker, did you did you have more that you wanted to say? I know you had your hand up. You did. Still oh, muted. Okay. I'm going to move that we accept the job description that's been put forward, okay. and I also want to move that we empower our chairs to be able to make a decision about this person um, along with the Human Rights Commission. The comment I wanna make is that if you're working on the Human Rights Commission, we're used to having no staffer and we have to do everything ourselves. And, and our wish was to have a staffer. I think we're gonna to have to trust each other, sort of like Larissa was saying earlier, to sort of work together as a group and say, here's what we want the staffer to do and to channel that through our chair. Um, and try not to be like our workplaces where each of us feels like we can ask whatever we want of each staffer, which is something that's what's wrong with a lot of the workplace. So I'll stop there. All right. Do So is there other discussion? I know Booker put forward a, uh, a motion. Josie, I see your hands up. Yeah, um, I agree with Booker and with the um, sentiments that Larissa put forward in that um, I do think that there needs to be some level of trust, not only amongst us as committee members, but in the trust that we will select or that someone will step forward to this position and that we will kind of embody the sense of community amongst us and amongst the staffer to be able to, um, you know, effectively, but also um, not overload um, with the work and indeed some of the work and that we, you know, keep open minds of communication um, that we are legally allowed to do so without violating up obviously um uh open forum law mm -hmm. that is all i just i i, I back booker's motion is, uh, is all okay are there other comments on it So court, if there's been a motion that's been made and now seconded, I think the, okay. body, the body needs to have a, take a vote on the motion. Okay. So okay. you would have to call a roll call. Have to call a roll, okay. So we can do that then. Um, Lois? Yes. Okay. Elizabeth? Yes. Okay. Uh, Booker? Yes. Okay. Uh, Dan? Yes. 
Okay. Nick? Yeah. Okay. Uh, David? Yes. Okay. Uh, Councilor Jarrett? Yes. Okay. Carmen? Yes. Javier? Javier, did you? Abstain. Abstain, okay. Uh, Dana? Yes. Okay. Uh, Dr. Paul? Yes, yeah, sorry, the, the slow was slow, but yes, yes, I vote. Oh, sorry, yeah. No uh, Councilor Quinlan? Yes. Uh, Josie? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Cynthia? Yes. All right. And Larissa? Larissa? I don't see Larissa. Yeah. Okay. On the list. All right. I'll record as non-vote. Okay, so it seems like um, seems like that passed then the motion. So um, excellent. So should we move on to the next uh, part of the agenda, which is a selection of meeting times and dates? Do folks have thoughts about this Tuesday? How about this? Date and time, it's Tuesday work for people. How, how often is, are the meetings? Are they every week or every other week or? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's entirely up to the commission to decide what yeah. they want. Sure, Cynthia. Um, I just want to throw something out there. Uh, can I propose every other week? Okay. On Tuesdays? On Tuesdays. From six to eight, the same time period. Too. There's some raised hands, Court. Oh, there are. Okay, sorry. Ugh. I just have to pull the, I don't keep that thing up. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, all right. I don't know who was first. Was Josie first? It's generally in order of who raised their hand first. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. Good. Josie? Um, yeah, I guess um, many, the majority of us are here on this date and this time. Is, is this not, um, I guess my question is, does this time generally work for most of us most of the time? Uh, like uh, the mayor pointed out, we're a pretty big committee and it might be difficult at times to get us all in here, but I think that if most of us can get here at a, at a pretty consistent time, that would be for the best. Um, I'd also like to say that this time works perfect for me. Okay. Um, so then Dan? Yeah, um, this time works for me. I think it's a good, time and especially going forward but um, my only concern is that I know there was one person who couldn't make it tonight or at least one person I just wanted to do we know if that person is always unavailable like are we if we chose to meet on Tuesdays are we like permanently excluding them <laughs> um, just to make sure that we're as open as can be but I also did want to say it, I think it's a good idea if we can um, I mean, as long as we have a, a quorum, that's what matters, right? So we can have people that phase out, but I, did want, I didn't want to permanently exclude one person. Yeah, no, the one person I think was uh, Attorney Hoos, right? That, um, but, that, but you're obviously here tonight, so that was for... When no, we it, the... it wasn't me. Um, oh. I mean, I, I, I would just say, I think we should, uh, the, the points that have been made are good ones. We should, we're never going to find a day that works for 15 people every time. So I just think we should set dates and everybody do their best to be here. Okay. 
Uh, Carmen, I believe you had your hand up. Yeah, I do agree um, with the Tuesday from 6 to 8. I just want um, folks to be mindful. If we're going to do every week or every other week, some of us do have small kids that do have to go to school the next day. So I know that the issues that we're going to talk about um, can definitely get people excited and the conversations can go a little bit longer than expected. But I just, I do want to also make sure that um, we're mindful of, of people who either have to go to work early in the morning or, you know, have uh, children to attend to. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Pohl? Yeah, this time works well for me. The only addition would be to think about maybe resuming when we have hired a staff person to help with that. But I suppose we could, we could proceed with, you know, with just the co-chairs. Um, otherwise, this is fine for me. I was just thinking, and every other week sounds fine too unless we feel like we need to meet more. That's all. Okay. Um, Councillor Quinlan? Yeah, just, just uh, this time works fine for me as well. I, I'm, I'm available just about every Tuesday at six, so that would be, that would work for me. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I agree with what Dr. Pohl just said about the, once we have the staff member, making sure that that works uh, well also, but the, the chairs would know that, the co-chairs would know that going into the interview process as well. So, um, great, thank you. So do we need to take a, do we need a motion then to set this or should? Um, yeah, I think you should take a vote on your um, On the meeting days and time schedule. Yeah. Does anyone want to make a motion to propose every week or every other week, Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m.? Uh, yes, Cynthia. I would move that we meet every other week on Tuesdays from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Second. Okay. So we'll take a vote on that then, um, unless there's further discussion about this. Uh, Lois? Yes. Okay. Elizabeth? Yes. Okay. Uh, Dr. Bush? Yes. Okay. Dan? Yes. Okay. Um, Nick? Works for me, yes. Okay. Uh, Attorney Hoos? Yes. Okay. Councillor Jarrett? Yes. Okay. Carmen? Yes. Okay. Uh, Javier? Yes. Okay. Uh, Dana? Dana? Yes. Oh, cool. Thank you. Um, Dr. Pohl? Yes. Okay. Councillor Quinlan? Yes. Okay. Um, Josie? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cynthia? Yes. And Larissa is not voting. Okay. Good deal. So uh, that would mean that the next meeting would be two weeks from, from today, right? Which would put us into, what day would that be? October 6th? All right. Okay. And um, and then so the next thing on the agenda is. Uh, but I think Carmen has her hand. Oh, up. I'm sorry, Carmen. I'm sorry. It's, a, it's okay. Um, I just want to make sure that that also puts us into November third. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. I have to look at my calendar here. Um, so it'd be the twentieth and then the third. Yes, you're right. Election day. Election day. Oh, yeah. All right. Good catch. Yeah. All right. So what do we, what do the folks want to do about that? Anyway. Can we perhaps doodle another day? 
for that week. I'm sorry, yeah, Dan. You put out a poll, you meant? Yeah, yeah, I do the poll. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, Carmen, is your hand still still up? Did you still have more that you Yeah, wanted? but I think um, Jared had one before me. Oh, okay. Great. Jared? Um, yeah, I, would, I was going to suggest that perhaps we could just do two weeks in a row and then do every two weeks. Um, that would be another option. So that would be um, November, sorry, October 27th and then November 10th. Uh, or the you know doodle poll for another date is also. Yeah, great. I was just going to suggest we start um, uh, next Tuesday and then just follow up with every other two, um, Tuesday after next week. Um, uh, Dr. Bush has his hand up as well. Yeah, I, I actually really like that idea because um, I was actually, I would like to meet again next week if we can do that because I would like to table the next discussion to the next meeting because um, we're already running really late. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I, I second that recommendation of meeting next week and if we agree to that, then I'm going to ask that we table the next agenda item to that following week. Okay. All right. So is there discussion about this at all or this motion to meet next week? All right. So I'll take a roll on that, I guess. Lois uh, and Nick have their hands up. Yeah, there are some hands up. Oh, there are. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Lois, so you had your hand up, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, I think that's a great idea. Oh, okay, great. And Nick, you had your hand up, sorry. Me too, I think it's a very good idea. Okay, excellent. So I can uh, take the roll then, unless there's other, other discussion. All right, Lois? Yes. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth? Yes. Okay. Booker? Yes. Okay. Dan? Yes. Okay. Nick? Yes. Uh, uh, David? Yes. Okay. Uh, Councillor Jarrett? Yes. Okay. Uh, Carmen? Yes. Uh, Javier? Yes. Okay. Uh, Dana? Uh, no. Um, I'll be able to come to a part of it, but not the whole meeting. Uh, Dr. Paul? Yes. Okay. Uh, Councilor Quinlan? Yes. Uh, Josie? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Cynthia? Yes. And Larissa? Still no rush. All right, so that passes. Um, so to meet next week, and um, and it also seemed like there was well, I guess Dr. Bush, were you going to make a motion to table the next discussion to next meeting? I would, yes, I would like to table the next topic um, to the next meeting because we're running late. But also, I think we need more time to be able to discuss that. Okay. Is there a second? Seconded. Okay. All right. Is there a discussion on the motion? All right. I will take the roll then. Um, Lois? Yes. Okay. Elizabeth? Yes. Okay. Uh, Booker? Yes. All right. Dan? Yes. Okay. Uh, Nick? Yes. All right. Uh, David? Yes. Okay. Uh, Councillor Jarrett? 
Yes. Uh, Carmen? Yes. Okay. Um, Javier? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dana? Yes. Okay. Uh, Dr. Paul? Yes. Okay. Uh, Councillor Quinlan? Yes. Okay. Uh, Josie? Yeah. Okay. Cynthia? Yes. Okay. And Larissa? All right. No. Okay. So that passes. So, um, so that will, uh, so the discussion about the NPRC charge and work plan formulation will be tabled to the next meeting. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? Um, may I bring up one bit of new business, please? Sure. Um, may I suggest that part of the agenda for our next meeting next week include a period of time for public comment? And I also want to suggest that we limit that to only 15 to 30 minutes at the beginning of the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, um, Nobody wants it. All you have to do is not second it and say no. I think if okay. Attorney Steve Hall yeah. is trying to get some. Yeah. Well, Attorney Seawald has a comment. One second. Oh, um, I don't think if you're going to open up to um, public comment that 15 to 30 minutes is going to do it. You've, you're opening a public forum and um, you, you run the risk of, uh, of not allowing sufficient public input if you're going to open this public forum. So I'm going to suggest it be more than 15 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes. Um, you know, typically, uh, and there is one case that has been decided on public comment. And um, so we, we do have to respect the First Amendment and you're opening a forum. So typically it's two hours is the maximum. That's what I've seen generally. And I think the council president has on occasion limited it to limited uh, public comment, as, as I recall. Is that, was it two hours? Uh, I think it was two hours and we, we took a vote of the entire council. Right. Whether to do that. So. Um, but so, Mr. Seald, am I, I mean, other, there are other bodies, other municipalities that do have a, have a limited time period right. that allow it, right? Maybe not. Right. Minutes, but. 15 minutes might be too short and two hours might be too long for this board, but that's more typical of what I've seen, um, particularly on a matter of public interest, to, you know, like this. Um, so, you know, I think a, a good compromise might be an hour, um, no more than, and you can also limit how long people can speak. That's another, I mean, you can force people to be concise. Can I also um, note, so one of the things that we've asked this commission to do is to hold three public hearings, at least three public hearings, it could be more, which would just be time for um, public input. So that's, you know, and, and more than that, more than three would be fine, but a minimum of three as well. Okay, I see Lois's hand up. Yeah, I, I, I think... 15 minutes or half an hour is, is too brief a period of time, uh, given the amount of, just as somebody just said, the amount of interest in this and uh, how many hours of input there was uh, during the council meeting, it's not suggesting it's eight hours or seven hours or whatever it was, but, <clears throat> um, uh, but so I, I would, I mean, I think we can limit the amount of, I mean, there have been this three minute limit. And um, as someone who's spoken at these things, I say I can pretty much usually say what I want to say in three minutes. So I would have that as a limit. 
and I think we need to have a discussion about how much time it is. I mean, obviously, if we're going to have a two-hour meeting, if we have a two-hour comment period, we're going to have a lot longer time than a two-hour meeting. But I think we need to, to talk about that. And uh, maybe what we can do is say for the first week, next week, as it's an hour with three minutes, and then we have part of that, have that as part of the discussion. I'm sure it would be part of the public comment. I'm pleased to remove my motion if this is the way we want to think about it. I, by the way, I've just, I've removed my motion. Okay. Uh, David Hoos, did you, I see your hand. Well, uh, given that Dr. Bush has removed his motion, um, I, I, I don't want to belabor the point. Um, I hope that um, we will be respectful of people's time commitments here. Um, and uh, if we're going to have two-hour meetings, I think we should stick to two-hour meetings. If we're going to have three-hour meetings, then we should stick to three-hour meetings. We should set a meeting time and we should stick to it. I think that the council president uh, is correct that um, we, we, we have to have a certain number of public hearings. And I think that uh, for us to start taking public comment before meetings when we haven't even gotten off the ground is uh, I think you know presumptuous uh, at, at best. And um, I think a far better approach would be to set aside separate dates for public hearings but um, that, that's all I have to say about it. Okay. And Dan, I see your, your hands up there. Yeah, I think I'd actually go the opposite for the first meeting and say that we should probably have an extended time. I think having a, an hour for public comment, um, especially since we are tabling what our charge is and discussing it, um, which potentially also impacts workflow, but it also impacts even what we actually look for. If we're, if we're asking for community input, um, I think it's especially important to have that at the outset um, rather than halfway through or whenever we schedule the first um, meeting that is just public comment. So I think having, having something there, even if it's an hour and we meet from like 5.30 to 8.30 or <laughs> something like that, respecting that some people can't go too late, um, but to have something for the first meeting where we have the ability to listen to people. Um, I think we already heard a lot um, if you attended any of the city council um, meetings beforehand, but I don't think it hurts to hear again from that and making it really clear that we have, um, we have an ear open to the community. Um, so I guess I would put forth a motion to have a three-hour meeting, a special three-hour <laughs> meeting where we talk about our charge um, and the scope of it, and then um, for the next meeting. Second. Okay. Is there further discussion on that? It looks like, yeah. Okay. So Elizabeth, um, I see your hand. Uh, yeah, I, I I like the idea of getting public comment um, early on in the process, um, but I, I am concerned that we haven't actually even started the process yet, and it looks like the next piece of the discussion is um, the work plan formulation, which um, is really just about sending, setting out some of the milestones and some of the, uh, you know, outcomes that we're looking to, to reach um, to get to the, uh, the, the, uh, you know, the places where we're, where uh, we were charged to to come up with some recommendations and I feel like it might be more um, helpful uh, again it's really just setting the kind of the rules of the road and setting out you know where we plan to be going to get some public comment um, after that um, I again I think early in the process is great uh, but I really would love to be able to, uh, and a work plan formulation is not a small task either. It's, it might even take three hours to do that. So I think that that's um, something I would just really strongly suggest that we get the work plan formulation in place um, and then allow for uh, any public comment um, afterwards that we can tweak the 
work plan or add something that where there's been was any um uh blind spots that we missed but i really would love to move in, move it forward mm -hmm. um let's see councillor quinlan i see your hand there yeah i i actually um thought very similarly to what Elizabeth just said that, you know, we, I think we, to me, it feels like kind of having an understanding, especially if, if we as a group were to think about subcommittees um, or anything like that, where, where various, you know, pieces of public comment might be more uh, than others. And the roadmap isn't just for us, it's also for the public to seek us out. So um, I, I wonder if we wouldn't be better off creating that plan first before taking public comment. Um, you know, again, I, I do think public comment is so important. Uh, and as I mentioned before, and, and Councilor Jarrett mentioned before, the, the overwhelming uh, amount of public comment in June just taught us so much. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. But, but I do think, you know, creating that map, not just for ourselves, but for the public to seek us out is important. And Lois, I see your hand up there. Uh, I think that um, it's important to have public comment uh, before we create a roadmap. And uh, so I would uh, favor having, even if it's only an hour of three minutes uh, for people to have, and maybe we can, I don't know if we can succeed, but to say, you know, we would like public comment on how people see the, uh, the commission going forward and what that roadmap is and to speak to that and and so to be informed by the public before we act on behalf of the public. And uh, Javier, I see your hand up there. Yeah, I, I was gonna say the same thing, Lois, and I agree with Dan too. Uh, I don't see any, if we're talking about us wanting to just to have a, the next meeting in two hours, that's something else, right? Mm -hmm. But if we're talking about just starting what we have to do, public coming doesn't impact in any negative way starting next week at all. If anything, I would, I would, uh, I would repeat what Lois said that in fact adds to the conversation about where we're going. Uh, I personally, I was, uh, I think I was in one or two of the big uh, city council meetings with hundreds of people in public comment. I don't think everybody here was in every of those. So I think that would be a good uh, moment for everybody to listen what people have to say. Okay. So is there, so Lois, were you seconding Dan's motion? Yeah, I was seconding one. Oh, okay, oh, Javier was, okay. Nick has a um, second up. Oh yeah, okay. Nick, um... yeah, I, I feel like um, I feel like there's been um, a fair amount of public comment. There needs to be more. I don't. I'm not. I'm not opposed to that at all. But I feel like we need to kind of chart our course based on the fact that public comment largely set the framework for us to get started. And I just feel like, kind of like what Elizabeth was saying, that we should um, try to um, put some things out there and then public comment might help guide us from there. But I feel like this is, we are here uh, partly due to the public comment and I'm, I just feel like getting something, getting that next piece of the agenda going um, feels like a, a, a large task in and of itself. And uh, Lois, I see your hand again. So, oh, no. Okay. Uh, Carmen, did you have something? Yeah, I agree with Elizabeth and Nick. I feel like we have to get our baseline prepared and that takes a very long time, even though I, I, I do appreciate and I want to hear what the public has to say. I wanna be able to uh, follow through with the time. Um, and I don't think that that will be enough time for us to be able to hear them, process what, they're, what, what the public is saying, 
um, and, as, and, and move forward with a plan when we haven't even set our plan in motion yet. Thank you. Uh -huh. And Dana, I see uh, your hand. Uh, I was just gonna agree with Carmen um, that I feel like there needs to be, I, I personally feel like I need to have a better understanding of what it is that we want to do and how we're gonna go about doing it um, before we open it up to that. Um, it's important and I also feel like I have no idea what <laughs> what we're what we're about to take on and I would like to have a better understanding I think we as a as a group need to have a better understanding of what we all want to do and how we want to do this together mm -hmm. and Dan I mean I'm not opposed to that um, I just I want to name that we are talking about doing something that is about the community um, that we all do have our own biases that we're bringing into this, our own understandings. Um, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's what's drawn us to this point. But I think it's also important to recognize that we are going to be, re we are going to, at our baseline, be representing and working for something that is for the community. So if we're talking about what we want to do as a commission, um, but we don't have public comment on this very specific thing and the way that it's played out and the way that it's formed, um, we are missing something. And I just want to put that out there as, a, as that, right? People gave public comment well before this commission was established, well before the scope of it was made um, and all of those things. And we, we don't exist ahistorically, um, but there is something to adding that. Um, and giving people the opportunity to speak um, for what we're doing now before we decide. Um, I think we all know that it's much easier to set something up <laughs> early on than it is to change something midstream. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're, we're aware of that um, and that we name it out. Okay, and Councillor Quinlan, I see your hand there. Uh, I was. I just noticed that Elizabeth's hands up too. And Elizabeth, if you want to go before me, you, it was your idea first. So please. Oh yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to comment on the um, on the fact that even with the public comment, they were it was in res it, they were res everyone was responding to something. They were responding to a budget. They were responding to a proposal, and so that's uh, you know they people came with their perspectives and individual thoughts and, and items that they um, were important to them, but it was in response to a proposal. And so uh, I want, it didn't just come out of nowhere. And so I, I think that that context is important because uh, you know, the, the community is trusting, um, trust the, you know, their elected officials to select this body, uh, this commission to be able to fill out these chart, do this, um, proceed with this charge. And it's part of our um, accountability and our responsibility to be able to uh, put together a plan or a draft of a plan so that the public can respond to. That's part of our work. And so I think um, balancing between the responsibility and accountability of the items that we are, uh, we need to move forward with and or things that we need to create for the public to respond to um, and then uh, balancing that with a um, thoughtfully reflecting on what we create and adjusting um, from what we hear from the public. I think that's that give and take that is, um, that is part of the responsibility and accountability of this commission and what we were chosen to do. Uh, so I, 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 I'll stop there. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councilor Quinlan. Well, I it strikes me that one of the tasks here is that we are to have three public hearings. Um, and so I would suggest to, to this group that, that maybe we consider making one of the next two meetings one of those public hearings, whether we do that next week and then take up, um, you know, kind of mapping this out the, the following time, uh, two weeks later, or vice versa. Uh, I think there's, there's real, I mean, we've, we've heard, you know, many people here uh, speak in favor of each side. I don't think that there's probably a wrong way to do this. I do think we should probably figure out if we want to just have a public hearing, take a, a whole bunch of public comment, take two more weeks after that to think about it and then come together and put our roadmap. 
together. I don't think that's a bad plan. And I think if we make our roadmap, and like Elizabeth said, then people can respond to what we've what we've kind of made laid out. That that, that wouldn't be wrong either. I, I really, to be completely honest with you, I can see this going seven to seven with me going. I don't know which way to vote. So I would uh, just ask you all to consider. Uh, whichever way you think is the right way, and I think we can propose a vote with, with one way or the other and, and move forward because, I, you know, again, to me, there's not a wrong way to do this. It's just a matter of us uh, deciding how we're going to do it and then, then going for it. And uh, Javier, I saw your... Yeah. Um, at this point, the community knows what they want. The community knows what they think, and the community knows what they're asking for. Uh, so I, I, I mean, with, uh, I'm going to start using the commissioner title, Commissioner Barajas Roman. I don't agree with that part of what you said. Um, I think people want to be listened. I think that if, if we move forward, if we are not having at the end of at this meeting, uh, public comment next week, I would invite those who were not in the meetings that the city council suffered through to listen to it. Uh, people know what they want, they know how they need it, and they, they, they are not afraid to say it anymore. Uh, that's all what I want to say. Okay. Is there a further comment, or should we take a vote on the original motion that Dan made about allowing an hour of public comment next week? And working on the work plan after that. When I second that. Yeah, and Javier seconded. All right. Um, oh yeah, I see Alex, Councilor Counsel Counsel Jared, I see you have your hand up. Uh, thanks. I just wanted to clarify uh, that motion. That motion also included a time change, is that correct? So to start at 5.30 and go to 8.30? Is that correct, Dan? I had floated that it could be six to nine. I mean, it was just extending it to three hours, but trying to be after the work day and also in respect of people that have children or obligations that mean they need to end at a specific time. Um, we could find another time that works for people too. It wasn't, I guess I'll, I'll leave it at, uh, I guess I'll amend it to be a three hour meeting with one hour public comment that can happen at any time the council chooses or commission chooses. Uh, I think we should choose the start time tonight, however. Um, but I just wanted to make sure people had the opportunity to weigh in on that start time um, before we voted. 5.30 works for me, 5.30 to 8.30. Are there further comments? Oh, it looks like Josie's got a comment there, All right? Yeah, I just wanted to second the 5.30 start time. Okay. Uh, cool. Lewis? So, Dan, what you're saying is you we should go from 5.30 to 8.30, and the first hour of it would be public comment, and then the rest of it would be a commission meeting? Yeah, so... Um... I was saying it should be three hours long, one hour of public comment. We could do 5.30 to 8.30. We could do six to nine. Whatever, right. Whatever time. I don't have, like, I don't have any restrictions. So I'm going right. to be. Right, do I. Right, <laughs> um, easy for us to say. Yeah, so I want to be respectful of other people if they have time commitments. Um, but I was just saying three hours. Uh, but I also do like um, Councillor Quillen's idea of having a full, public comment very early on in the process. I just, I'm fine with the, with either. I just wanna make sure that people have a chance to speak before we plan out what our our goals are and what our roadmap is gonna be. Because I think, again, I think it's gonna be harder to change than it is to start out at the outset, all on the same page. Okay, and I see Carmen's hand up. And, do I follow, and we agree to the, is it, was it the three minute limit? Per, in, per individual? Okay, thank you. And uh, Nick, and then I see Cynthia too. I just want to clarify um, 
of what uh, Councillor Quinlan was suggesting. Are we saying this is one of the public comment sessions that's part of the uh, uh, requirement, or is this an additional session? It strikes, it strikes me, Just I'll just respond since you asked uh, in, in regard to my comment, that what Dan's proposing is this would be an additional uh, one hour of public comment. It wouldn't be one of our public hearings, uh, which will be, uh, you know, specific meetings set aside just for public comment. Those, those will be uh, not, not, we wouldn't also then, you know, uh, deliberate on anything. Uh, Cynthia, I see your hand there. Yeah, just clarification, Dan, um, are you proposing the 5.30 to 8.30 for next meeting or every meeting? Just, uh, so if we do an extended meeting, it would just be the meeting before we determine our, um, it would just be public comment before we determine the roadmap um, and the work plan. So beforehand, um, just that one, one special meeting. Gotcha, thank you. And Lois, I see your hand up again. Right, I, I just want to um, second what Dan is saying, uh, just about the importance of uh, public comment uh, before we create a roadmap, because the roadmap, the initial plan that we received or the, is something that uh, can be expanded on, and it can be expanded on with public comment. And that's why I think it's so important that we do it, that we hear from people before we start deliberating. Mm -hmm. All right. So are there, let's see, Lois, Nick, Nick, did you have more to say or was that? I just wanna clarify, Elizabeth had suggested, or there two things were floated. One was having public comment before the, the work plan meeting and the other was to have public comment after the work plan meeting. Are we just considering the one at this point? The, oh, the before. Like, yeah, I, what I understand is that Dan made a motion. There's a motion for one, yeah. Yeah, for one, and it was seconded by Javier, and that's what you guys are discussing now, whether that's, and whether or not to vote on it next. And Cynthia, I see your hand there too. Did you? No. Okay. So, do you want do you want to take a, do you want to take a vote on on Dan's motion to extend the meeting to three hours from five thirty to eight thirty next week with an hour of public comment limited to three minutes per participant? Does that sound all right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Lois. All right, um, Elizabeth? No. No, okay. Uh, Booker? Yes. Okay. All right, Dan? Yes. Okay. Nick? No. No, okay. Uh, David? No. Okay. Uh, Councilor Jarrett? Yes. Okay. Uh, Carmen? No. No? Okay. Uh, Javier? Yes. Okay. Uh, Dana? Uh, abstain. Abstain, okay. Uh, Dr. Paul? Yes. Okay. Uh, Councilor Quinlan? Well, this is a good one. Um, I'm going to say no. You're going to say no? Okay. Uh, Josie? Uh, yeah. Yes? Yes? Okay. Uh, Cynthia? Yes. Yes. And Larissa is not voting, right? All right. So let's see. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight yeses, and 
One, two, three, four, five. Five no's, one abstention, and one person not voting. So the yeses have it. So it sounds like the motion carries and that the meeting would be from 5.30 to 8.30 with an hour of public comment limited to three minutes per participant, per speaker at the next meeting. Sound right? Sounds right to me. All right. And uh, so the last, the last uh, item is adjournment. So I don't know if anybody wants to make a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Okay. Okay. And who seconded? I'm sorry, I didn't see who it was. I did. Councilor oh, thanks. okay, Councilor Jared. Thanks. All right. And um, all right. So uh, Lois, I guess we take a roll call for adjournment, right? Lois. Yes. Okay. Um, Elizabeth. Yes. Okay. Uh, Dr. Bush. Yes. Okay. Do uh, Dan? Yes. Okay. Do Nick? Yes. Okay. Uh, Attorney Hoos? Yes. Okay. Councilor Jerk? Yes. Okay. Carmen Lopez? Yes. Okay. Uh, Javier? Yes. Okay. Uh, Dana? Yes. Okay. Uh, Dr. Pohl? Yes. Okay. Uh, Councillor Quinlan? Yes. Okay. Uh, Josie? Yes. Okay. Cynthia? Yes. Okay. And Larissa, non voting. Okay. So you are adjourned. Great. Thank Bye you. Everyone. See you. See you next week. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Nice hearing from you. Bye. Great job, Court. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Court. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Sorry for the hiccups there. All right. Easy. Yeah. Oh, oh look at that. No. Do you see look, this is actually little okay. Agnes. Well, She's visiting. Agnes. 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 She's a little, Dash. Dash. Sorry. little long. Oh, Dash is good. He's sleeping Sorry. downstairs. Agnes is visiting for a week. Oh. She's our little house cat. Where's Dash? Dash? I don't know. She cute. Dash, Dash is sleeping Dash. somewhere. I want Dash. Dash, Dash, I don't know Dash. where he is. He's probably on the couch downstairs, you know. Uh. <laughs> Bye. 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 You should go downstairs and summon Dash. Yeah, I guess I should turn off the recording. Oh, here. There we go.